Welcome to the Militia Gaming Community. I'm Trigger Militia, and this video is all about the 1998, 1998, all about the 1988 BMW M3 in Need for Speed Heat. Let's go. Huge thank you to everyone supporting the channel. We're zeroing in on 15,000 subs, and I really couldn't have done it without all of you guys watching the content, so thank you very much. We now have an official Militia Gaming Community Discord server, so we can all crack open barks together. Dave Loves Games and I have come together to create this awesome place for our communities to meet. There's an invite link below if you want to join. Alright, let's get into the video. If you're familiar with these build videos, go ahead and skip to about the 2 minute mark. If not, here's how these videos go. I buy each engine for the car and test it on the day races Arian and Aardvark to find out which one is the fastest engine. During the testing, I record the final race time and compare it to the other engines for that car. I only record the time if the race was super clean. I've raced over 400 times on these two courses, so I know them like the back of my hand. If I make a driving mistake, I immediately restart the race and throw that time out. Consistency and accuracy are my top two priorities. After I find the fastest engine though, I optimize it for each type of racing the game offers. Track, drag, drift, and dirt. Giving you four completely different builds to use for each type of racing in the game. I also have my personal top 20 for the two track courses so that we can compare the race times with the rest of the cars that I've tested to see how each car stacks up in the grand scheme of things. The idea is to have some sort of foundation to rank the cars from fastest to slowest. Keep in mind that this is my personal top 20, and it does not represent these cars fastest possible times on these tracks. There are people out there running faster times using race shortcuts and different builds than me. The goal is to find the fastest engine for the car because that seems to be the biggest headache when building cars in this game. There are 8 possible engines for this 1988 M3, but 5 of them will not make the car 400+. plus. The three that did were the 493 horsepower 3.0 liter inline 6, the 503 horsepower 2.9 liter V6, and the 471 horsepower 2.9 liter V8. All of these engines ran pretty similar times, but the 493 inline 6 was consistently faster in all of my tests. At Arian, it ran a 302.3 before I had a chance to live tune it compared to the 303 and the 305.9 by its competition. FYI, I always test these engines with the default live tuning settings and track tires. Then after finding the fastest engine, I start tweaking the tune to get the best results. And I had to make some big changes to make this car perform to its full potential. First, I maximized the steering sensitivity and minimized the downforce, then I dropped race tires on it and ran it again. After making these changes, I was able to post a time of 259.5 on Arian, which is nearly 3 seconds faster than without these adjustments, and that puts this M3 in 13th place on the Arian leaderboard. At Aardvark, the fastest time I was able to run was 447.4, which is actually 17th place. So my final track build is as follows. The 493 inline 6 engine, ultimate plus engine parts, ultimate dual turbo, a 5x3 pound NOS, the super track suspension, elite brakes, elite race tires, elite plus clutch, elite plus 8 speed gearbox, super track differential, maximum steering sensitivity, and minimum downforce. As far as a track car goes, this is pretty average. It falls in the middle of the pack of the cars that I've tested, and to run a time under 3 minutes on Arian, it was definitely a struggle. I've decided to get rid of the scoring system I was using in previous build videos because it felt so arbitrary and based on my feeling of the car instead of the data. So you can judge this car by its two race times, its 13th at Arian and 17th at Aardvark. Let's move on. I was able to build this car to be a drag car with a 1.80 to 60 and a 8.53 quarter mile. This puts it in 6th place overall out of all the cars that I've tested. The build looks like this, 493 inline 6 engine again, ultimate plus engine parts, ultimate dual turbo, 1 by 15 pound NOS, super track suspension, elite brakes, elite drag tires, elite plus clutch, super plus 6 speed gearbox, super track differential with a minimum downforce. 
With NOS in particular, it's definitely fast enough to compete with the fastest drag cars in the game. An 8.53 quarter mile is the same as the Ford GT, and it's only a three hundredths of a second behind the Evo 9. So it is definitely a fast drag car, even though it's rear wheel drive and not all wheel drive. To turn this car into a drift car, I did the standard drift setup for a rear wheel drive car, which consists of a speed cross suspension, drag tires, and drift differential. Now this setup usually works with all of the rear wheel drive cars in the game. However, some cars require a little bit of tweaking. In this case, it really didn't. I scored insanely high with this setup. So the full build looks like this. It's the 493 inline six engine with the ultimate plus parts and ultimate dual turbo, along with the five by three pound NOS. And obviously the NOS is irrelevant because we're drifting. The super speed cross suspension, the elite brakes, elite drag tires, elite plus clutch, elite plus eight speed gearbox, and pro drift differential. Again, the scores I was able to achieve with this car were absolutely crazy. I mean, I blew away some of my top scores and knowing that the RX-7 is most likely the best scoring drift car in the game, and I haven't tried that yet, I'm excited to give that one a try later on, but I think this M3 does a great job of scoring on drifting. It also transitions fairly well, not quite as good as the Evo 9, but it definitely transitions from drift to drift pretty well, good enough to control the car and score high, and holding a drift for a long period of time was not very hard at all. I definitely recommend this car as a drift car. And the last section of the video, the dirt. I tested this car with the same setup as my other dirt builds, and here's what happened. This car absolutely killed it. It ran a 151.4 on HTV2 and a 314.2 on Rumble, giving it a combined time of 505.6. This is the third fastest combined time I've recorded, which was honestly so unexpected. I thought maybe this car is a middle of the pack off-road car at best, but it blew away my expectations. It's still a few seconds behind the RSR and MX-5, but it is really fast on the dirt. The full build looks like this. Same engine, 493 inline six, ultimate plus parts, ultimate dual turbo, and five by three pound NOS. I went with the super rally suspension, elite brakes, elite off-road tires, elite plus clutch, Elite Plus 8-speed gearbox and Super Rally differential, and I did have the steering sensitivity maxed out with the minimum downforce. All right, to sum this car up, it is an average track car at best. It scored in the middle of the pack for all of my times on Arian and Aardvark. It is an above average drag car, although not the best drag car, but it definitely is faster than most and it's an excellent drift and off-road car. Both of these sections of racing, I would recommend this car 100%. It scores very high in drift, and it is very fast in the dirt. If you have any questions about this video or any video, don't be afraid to hit me up on Instagram or join our community Discord. I read every message and answer as many as I can. All right, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Trigger out.